Hello, Cascadia. Hello. Welcome to the NAPI session. My name is Atashe, and I'm a developer at Adobe. I'm here today to get you all excited about writing native modules in Node.js, in building functionality that would bridge the grand old C++ language with the modern, the hip, the classy JavaScript. <laughs> a few tidbits about me. I work in San Francisco, and I am co-located with most of the former Flash team. <laughs> Here's a view of the San Francisco skyline right from my desk. Over the years, I've worked with a variety of technology stacks. I've worked on flagship desktop applications, award-winning mobile software, but my heart still lies with the web. The first website that I worked on was all in Flash and the LAMP stack. We cared a lot about IE6 back then. <laughs> Over time, I've moved on and covered up the HTML progression. With that, I've been rewriting my website. The latest rewrite happened just a month ago, where I moved off Bootstrap onto CSS Grid. At Adobe, I work on a background process. This process synchronizes all the network I.O. that Adobe applications do to the cloud. Since it is I.O. heavy, the best technology to write this in is Node.js. At Adobe, we ship a Node.js-based process, a Node.js-based background process, to millions of customers that run our products. If you've used Photoshop in the last three, four years, you would have interacted with this process in the background. Since we ship to a variety of machine configurations, and Node.js is really built for the server side. There are some issues that Node doesn't solve, and for that, we need to go down to the native layer. And to go down to the native layer means working in C++. I am the go-to guy in my team to work with C++. And I've been doing it for the last three years. In this talk today, we'll talk about why we should write or when we should write native code. We'll talk about the various ways to interact with native code from within Node.js. We'll go through a running example of a NAPI-based plugin to Node.js, a module that looks like JavaScript but is written in C++. We'll do a synchronous, a asynchronous version as well, and then we'll be also running it in Electron. I'll share some tips and tricks to be successful in the native world and leave you all with a bunch of resources to play with at the end of the conference. As JavaScript developers, we are like astronauts. We fly in the space and don't really care about what happens down at the Mother Earth. <laughs> Actually, sometimes we do have to. Sometimes the JavaScript developers do have to go down a layer into the world of unmanaged memory, of multi-threaded architectures, and my favorite, segmentation faults. <laughs> this, what, let me talk about what this talk is not about. This talk is not about the V8 engine, the engine that's used to build Node.js. We will not be going into the V8 internals or learning how it works. This talk is also not about the C++ programming language. While we will be using C++, there are better ways to learn C++. This talk is also not about improving the performance of your node-based application. Frankly speaking, poorly written native code would be a lot worse than average JavaScript code. It would crash your app. <laughs> what this talk is really about is about building modules. It's about extending the node ecosystem with the functionality that was not practically or efficiently possible with the current state of JavaScript. It's about writing a module that looks and behaves just like any other module in the Node ecosystem, but from the inside is written in a very different way. So let's get started. Why would we write native code? That's a big question that comes up whenever we talk about native code. JavaScript has everything. Well, there are a few things that make JavaScript slightly difficult to write. For example, your OSs are mostly written in C, C++, or expose their functionality in those languages. Something new came out, the dark mode in Mojave, 
What do you do? Do you wait for it to be standardized to use it? In a Node app, you could directly include it. In C++, in Electron, you could write C++ code to read the current state of the dark mode and show it to the user. The second big reason to write native code is if you have some C++ code lying around. C++ is a 30-year-old developed, very well-used language. We have tons of production-ready code in C++. And not all of that compiles to WebAssembly. So kind, we are kind of forced. If you want to, do we want to rewrite everything in JS? Or maybe just for this case, let's use what we have. And that is a very good use case for going down native. Another important case where we actually have to go down native is when we need to crunch numbers. Now, JavaScript is the best language for doing I.O. If you have to communicate over the network or file system is your main mode of communication, write JS. Don't go native. But then, if you have to do heavy number crunching, something that would burn the CPU hot, it's better to go down to the native layer. You'll save quite a lot of dollars. In summary, the only reason to write native code is that we are not JavaScript developers. We are solution providers to a problem, and we are building race cars. We love the metal too much, but then in a race car, we do need some plastic, we do need some rubber. And therefore, to build a race car, let's assemble everything. So let's talk about the various ways to communicate with native code in Node.js. Child process, that's my favorite. And I think that's the one that most of you would have already used. Child process comes natively in Node. You can just require child process from any of your modules and use child process. Child process runs in its own process, and therefore, you can write typical Node code. Your Node thread would not be blocked when a child process is running. You can get it to run asynchronously, pass it arguments, and take the result. Child process is perfect. Perfect for what it does. But it does have a few limitations, and there are a few cases where it does not work that well. What if the functionality that you would want is not natively available or easily possible with a shell script or a bat script or direct command line? Are you willing to ship another binary? Will that binary work well with the antivirus that some user has installed somewhere in Japan? How do I know? And that is a big reason to be careful with child processes. You're writing into shell directly, and there are cases where it's not a good idea, especially if STD-IO is not enough. The communication with child processes normally happens through the standard input, output, and error ports. Now, the problem with that is it's good if you want to work with that, but say you're passing a large amount of image data, you'll have to go down to the file system, which is very complicated. Child process is like a tow truck. It can get you to your destination. But I would never want to talk about that. <laughs> Let's talk about something better. FFI, or foreign function injection. FFI is not really a node concept. It is a concept that's there in all programming languages. The binary interface of the C programming languages has been standardized as the interface for information exchange between languages. In short, if you have a C-style library, then any language can read through the binary and directly call into the functionality. So if a method is exported in a C-style library, you can directly read it from Node.js and call into it. No writing C++, no writing C, you are still in JS. And there is a native module available in Node called FFI or FFI NAPI in Node 10 Plus, which can do that. It is actually the best approach if you have a library with C-style code lying there. The reason? You can use it in multiple languages. Your C guy can write the C code, and you can focus on JS. But it has its own set of disadvantages. For example, the JS bridge to C++ is still slow. The other big disadvantage which affects JS developers is that C developers like to take on the main thread. If the C library is actually slow and you're actually doing number crunching, you would want to do this in a background thread. Don't stall my application while this thing is running. And you cannot do that with FFI. For doing something like that, you need more, something more advanced. FFI is more like a toy. It works for what it works. But if it doesn't, look for a better solution. Now, Node is built in V8. V8 is a C++-based library. And what that means 
is you can directly call C++ via the V8 APIs and extend Node. So simple. You'll get the full performance of V8. You can extend V8 and write new JavaScript, maybe write ES2019 in your module. But then there is one big problem. V8 releases a new version every month, and they cannot guarantee the compatibility of their API across releases. What that means is that if I write a node module using the V8 APIs next month, I might need to rewrite it. No one can maintain that. And the node team realized it very early. That is why they created NAN, a wrapper over the V8 API, which hides the changes as V8 changes. And if you use NAN, you can recompile your module across various versions of Node, and it'll continue to run. No rewriting needed. NAN was built as a specific solution to a very specific problem. That was to hide V8, and it does that job perfectly. But it was never thought out to be a very well-defined C++ interface for JS communication, and it starts to show its age. For example, you need to understand V8 to use NAN properly you need to recompile with every release. People who use multiple versions of Node would have seen this error at some point or the other. This error comes in because of NAN. NAN is highly tied to a version of Node. And so if you want to switch your Node version, there are problems. More than that, if you happen to be writing Electron and have your unit tests in Node, you will only be recompiling for the entire day. Another issue with NAN is that it's so complicated to set up NAN that you will be actually ending up setting up your production machine to have a C compiler, a Python compiler, and the JavaScript runtime just to use JavaScript in production, which is not really a good thing to do. NAN is like manual transmission. You need to know what gear to go into for your application to work. Otherwise, this error awaits. Now, if NAN is manual, Let's talk about the automatic, the NAPI. The NAPI has been marked stable with Node 10. And for the last 15 days, Node 10 has been the LTS version of Node. So NAPI is production ready. NAPI has a very well-defined binary interface. That is, the, it is ABI stable. In short, the Node team guarantees that if you write something using the NAPI, you can not only use it in the, with the past versions of Node, Node 8, where it was experimental, and Node 10, but also in the future versions. The Node, Node team will, get, will try to make sure that your NAPI module stays relevant and you do not need to recompile across releases. NAPI provides a full set of utility methods to communicate with C++ in a proper JS way. For example, it hides all the complications around pointers. It hides how to create a background thread in a very simple method. And Electron Rebuild is officially dead once we have all plugins that have moved to the NAPI. Now, before I talk about how to write some NAPI code, I would like to know how many of you have heard about C++ before my talk? <laughs> Everyone. How many of you have actually used C++ or written C++ code? It's quite a few. How many of you love C++? Love it more than JavaScript. <laughs> Again, a joke question. Because C++ is much more difficult to write. And unless you really need to, I would prefer to stay in the JS land. Let's show some sample NAPI-based code. So I have an ES6 module that exports a property x, which is a function that returns hello world. This is what it would look like in ES5. Slightly more verbose. But look at C++. <laughs> it looks very complicated. But actually, it's very simple from the C++ standards. At the bottom of the file, we have this node API module, which is declaring that the module.exports come from the export method, and the name of the module comes from the zip file. The zip file is equivalent to packet.json in the native world. In the exports method, we are setting a property x to be the foo function, which has been converted from a C function to a JS function. And in the foo function, we are returning a string, hello world. At the top of the file, there is NAPI.h, which we are including. Include is kind of like imports. I think most of us are C++ developers, so I don't need to go into details for all of that. Now, what we'll be doing today is building or showing a running native module. 
Let's go to a hypothetical situation that I've been very lucky in Vegas. <laughs> and not only that, all of you have been luckier. So while I get some cash, you get to drive a brand new car. And as you drive through the Vegas trip, you see me in your side view mirror. And for another lucky break, it's actually raining in Vegas. And that is what we would be doing. We'll be taking an image, adding a rain effect to it, overlaying it with another image, and fitting it inside a frame. We are doing all of this using Image Magic. Image Magic is an open source C++ API for image manipulation. Very popular on the server side, very popular on the command line. You can read all about it. It's all over the internet. So let's get started. I'm, I'm here in the middle of a test file where I'm loading a module called version.node. In version.node, we export a method called version, which returns the current node version as a string. And I'm logging it onto the console. Let's look at binding.jip, which represents the package.json for this module. It has the similar things, just like package.json. The name is called target name, because we are C++ developers. We want to make it a bit more confusing. <laughs> then it has dependencies, which is an array, and it can run some shell scripts or node scripts directly. We have some flags to tell the compiler how to compile it, and we have some OS-specific stuff. And that is all there is to it. When Node would read this file, it would understand that it is native code and compile this binary. Let's go into the binary version or the C++ version of this module. This looks exactly like the demo, that the sample code that I just showed. So at the bottom of the file, we again have Node API module. The name comes from the zip file. There is a method called init, which has a property called version, which is the function get version. In the get version function, we are returning a string which we are, instead of hard coding hello world, getting from the image magic API, which we've included via magic plus plus dot h. Now, as I execute this in my debug console, I think it's slightly difficult to see. We have image magic version 7 being logged. That is the version of image magic that's installed on my machine. Now that we've gone through a hello world, I would like you to go through something a little more complicated. So in this second example, we are reading a file called photo.jpg which is a binary image file. Please don't point at read file sync. I know it's bad code. <laughs> Once we get the image file, we load the info.node, info provider native module, which exports a method process image, which is going to process this image and return a JS object. This object I'm logging onto console. Many JavaScript developers don't know that json.stringify actually can take more than one argument. The third argument of json.stringify is extremely useful. This is the number of white spaces, so you can get a prettified JSON st string from a JavaScript object directly without going to JS Beautify or whatever you guys are using. Coming back to native code, let's look at info.cc, the code for the info.node module. The bottom of the file looks exactly like I've just shown to you, all of you. The name comes from the zip file. The init method provides the exports. The exports is actually a property called process image, which comes from the process image C++ function. Now let's get into the process image function. The first thing to note is that it doesn't take multiple arguments. It takes an info object. This info object is very similar to the arguments object in JS or the triple dot args like we write in ES6. Then from this info object, we can verify that the parameters being passed are correct. And if they're not, we throw a JS exception. Why we want to do that? We're still living in the world of segmentation faults. If we make a mistake, our program would crash. And therefore, we want to be extra careful. It's better to get into the unhandled exception in the node place rather than crashing here in C. Once we know that it is a buffer, we can convert it from a raw JS object to a buffer. TypeScript folks would understand that this looks very close to TypeScript. And generics in C++ have been an inspiration for a lot of languages, including TypeScript. Once we convert it to a buffer, we have direct access to the raw binary data and the length of the buffer. We can use this to pass on and create an image magic image. Now from the image, I'm not doing much. I'm reading the width and the height of the image, a few attributes, and then creating a JS object. Creating a JS object in C++ is a little more verbose than creating it 
is in JS. So I need to create an object with the width, height, created, and modified parameters, which I again get from the number and string type data. And then I return it back to Node. Now, as I execute it in my debug console, you should see that I'm loading a full HD image. The, modif the created time is actually right now. And that is because I passed on a binary image to ImageMagick. ImageMagick did not get to read a file from disk. And that is why it was just created when the binary data was provided. And it did not have a modified time. The demo that I just showed was kind of an example that we would not like to use in production. It's doing processing in the main thread, right? And main thread stalls, and our application stops working. So let's do something where it goes to a background thread, takes a callback, gives us the processed image in our callback. Now we pass it on and save the file as edit.jpg onto our console. Let's look at the code for edit.cc. Now this also starts just like the code that I showed for the previous two examples. We again get the name from the zip file. The init method provides a method called edit, which is the function edit. In the function edit, we validate the argument just like we did in the previous example. And then instead of doing some calculation, we create a worker called image modifier, which takes the buffer and the callback. And then we queue that worker on a background thread. We are not creating background threads manually. Oh God, it's so difficult to create background threads. <laughs> Things like deadlocks, they stall your application. Do not waste CPU, but you don't run. This is so much better. An API provides direct access to run stuff in a background thread, and it manages the thread pool. Now let's look at the image modifier class. Image modifier derives from an async worker which encapsulates all the background thread calculations. Async worker takes a callback, and it ensures the unmanaged memory part of C++. So when we need the callback back again after execution in the background thread, the async worker will ensure that the callback has not been garbage collected by V8, and we can use it again. We can directly copy in values that we get, like numbers and strings. But in this case, I'm passing a lot of binary data, and we don't want to copy the binary data in the JS thread. And that is why we're using the node buffer. Despite the presence of array buffers, node buffer is not dead because of a reason. Node buffer is a very special object. The binary data of node buffer is accessible even from background threads. And that is why node buffer still exists. And to do that, what we are doing is we are marking it persistent so that accidentally the node buffer does not get deleted. It will get garbage collected once this class object is destroyed. And then we are keeping a reference to the actual binary data and the length of the data to pass on to ImageMagick. An API would ensure that my execute method is actually called in the background thread. Now in the execute method, I'm passing on that image data to ImageMagick. I'm loading a few images. I specify the rain effect. I overlay it with my water image and then change its dimension to fit it inside the car frame. Once I am done, I can write this output to another variable. We don't have to write to disk. Now, Node is happy passing this variable directly to the JS land. We do not need to copy it over or waste our memory or CPU doing things with the data. We can directly use it in JS. But unfortunately, image magic doesn't allow me to. And therefore, I need to copy this data into a binary object, into a basic object. Now, to do that, I'm using this. But this is not really stalling your JavaScript thread. All this code is running in your background thread in the execute method. So your JS code will still be performant. Once that method executes, we get to the on OK method, which is again called in the JS thread, where we can execute JavaScript. And in this method, what we are doing is getting a callback and calling it, with undefined as the error argument and the buffer as the success argument. Now, there's one more thing that we need to remember, and that is this line, which is not really declaring a C++ variable that we are not going to use. This is actually creating a JS scope. All functions in JS are automatically having a scope. But since we are not creating a function, we're directly calling a function, we need to create a scope manually. And once the scope is destroyed, if any of the objects created in the scope are not referenced anywhere, they could be garbage collected. Now let's see how I create the buffer to pass on. 
The buffer is again created by the buffer new, just like we were using string new or a number new. A buffer is slightly more complicated in sense that it takes this, an asynchronous function called a C++ lambda. We need to do this because C++ still has managed, doesn't have managed memory. So for unmanaged memory, when this buffer is actually garbage collected, we will need to free the internal data, and that is what we are doing. Now, as I execute this, you won't see anything in the console, but it'll successfully log done. And instead of showing what I was doing, since I'm running out of time, I'll show you something cooler. Now, what I'm going to do is, without recompiling, I'm going to load it in Electron. And as I click on this, here it is. The same code running in Electron, no recompilation. And I'm going to make a fool of myself now as I take a selfie of myself in front of all of you on the stage. Yo! <laughs> and it does that processing, and it's instantly available for me to save. Now, the same thing is available at napi.atisha.me. Feel free to try it out after my speech and have a souvenir for the conference. And I'm already out of time, so I'll just make it quick. The best tips to work with native code are actually three things. Rule number one, do not write native code. Try to see if something that is not native can solve the problem for you. Because child processes are good for a lot of cases, and so is FFI. And unless you really need native code, do not write native code. The second rule of writing native code is do not give it to a native developer. Because they don't understand JS, they'll hog your main thread. Write it like beautiful JS and ugly C++, and you will be successful. <laughs> the third rule of writing native code is, again, to remember the first rule. Don't write native code. <laughs> if you have written some native code, just evaluate if you need it. JS is evolving. And over time, more and more stuff is moving to JS. What you needed in native a year back may be redundant now. Keep yourself up to date. The code for all of my demos are available at NAPI in my GitHub repo. The sample service is available at napi.atisha.me. That's all I have to say. Drive safely if you're going to use native code. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>